Good morning. This is Dan Allen. I am your co-host today for our Saturday Q&A on the uh, trading side of our business project. I'm here with my co-host, the gentleman that actually steers the ship during this uh, this event, uh, Mr. Tito Avila. We're right hit. We're right at the top of the hour, Mr. Avila. The call is yours. The helm is yours, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Allen. Um, good morning, everybody. Feeling frosty out here. Tell you what, so uh, we got blessed with a white Christmas uh, last minute, kind of. Uh, it was really, really nice. So, trying to stay warm out here. Uh, if you got questions, please uh, go ahead and either drop them in the chat or unmute yourselves. And let's get cracking on some market action. How's your uh, holiday going so far there, Mr. Allen? I'm going to tell you something honestly, sir. I celebrate every single day. I don't, I don't take it day <laughs> off being amazing. So I can't tell one from the other. One. Yeah, sir. Love it. Yeah, so I'm having yeah, the ball. Especially these days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stay on top. So you're coming up from Florida, so the snow is like decent to you, right? Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've been very blessed. I've lived in a lot of different places growing up, you know. Um, <clears throat> uh, my, my mother moved around quite a bit, so okay. I, I got a chance to see a lot of different things. So I grew up in Indiana, but I'm okay. from Miami, so I've lived in both. And now I'm in the mountains of North Carolina. I lived in Venezuela. So I know I've seen, I've seen a little bit and uh, all different types of climates. But I love the cold, man. I, I tell you, it's definitely... Uh, the beach is nice. I like to go to the beach. I like to visit the beach. But as far as living goes, yeah, take me to the mountains, personally. Got it. Got it. Got it. So if anybody has a question, please just unmute yourself, jump in. Uh, I don't really look at the chat too much. That's Mr. Vila's party. Uh, but as, again, he's staring the ship. He said if you put a, something in the chat, he's paying attention. So how is it for you uh, when the liquidity is down out the market do you stay out the market during these uh times or do you just stay away from the dollar and go to the other pairs um if there is not enough volume or volatility um i've learned to just kind of get out of the way because um a lot of times especially what i've realized recently with the unique circumstances of the uh the fundamentals of the markets today which means the the uh, external circumstances, the political circumstances surrounding the markets, I've learned um, that a lot of times uh, consolidation, which means price kind of moving sideways and not really making any sudden moves in any direction, uh, it can last a lot longer than you think sometimes. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I've just I've learned that the best thing to do in, in situations of uh, low volume low volatilities, kind of, you know, unique, strange movements is to just sort of, it's to take notes, really, honestly, because any any uh, chance that the market does something uh, different from, you know, the baseline or, or let's say the standard day-to-day -day types of patterns is an opportunity to learn something. Uh, so that that's, I kind of, I keep the money out the market and, and put it on paper. <laughs> That's, that's, that's what I try to do. That's funny because as I, start, as I started getting comfortable with what I was seeing, it's like a, a good drama for me at times. So yep. I, hear you, I hear you saying for me, you don't actually trade, but you watch the actual market itself from, uh, there was a TV show called 227, right? And mm -hmm. the old lady, African-American show, old lady, you should sit at the top of her window looking outside and just watching what everybody was doing like the newsy neighbor. I'm like that with the market too. Like I don't have to be trading. I can just watch and say, mm, 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 mm. so yeah, exactly. Once, once, once you 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 know you get comfortable enough with decoding and uh, speaking the language or reading it, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, that scene in the Matrix, right? Where uh, where the operator is just like, you know, after a while, you don't see the code anymore. You just see blonde brunette whatever you know like and all the code is just going like this down the right. screen 
um, over time, I definitely find that to be the case more and more with the markets. And, and the, the questions um, actually increase over time for me, right? Okay. Like, like, so in other words, as I get more comfortable and as I get more, um, uh, let's say, um, not involved, but um, enticed by the drama, <laughs> uh, uh, there's more questions that come up for me. And so, you know, you, you kind of just start to dig deeper and, um, and what, you know, want to really uh, get more, I guess, um, precise in the connecting of the dots. So I was talking with a guy on the phone this week, right? And I know we're going to get right back to the questions. Just jump in, y'all, if you have one. Um, so we're talking, and his background is crypto. So I know him from crypto. So I'm having a conversation with him, want to hear a story, yada, 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 right? And so as I'm telling him about my, that I've been trading since 2018, he said, wow, I used to work at so-and-so, so-and-so, and I was trading this time. So now we're talking about trading. So... Then he said that he did, he did some quant work, right? So I said, well, I watched a documentary on high frequency trading and the quants are the men over there. So we having this talk and he, he got a part, a part of our conversation I just want to highlight is he was talking about the Forex market before the Euro was the Euro. It used to not be one because solid, because it's actually right. the Euro zone at the area. And mm -hmm. then that creates the Euro, which is the currency. So he's telling me about 2006, which mm -hmm. I started trading in 18, that mm -hmm. there wasn't a Euro zone that like it is now geographically. So there was no Euro currency and they used to trade the Denmark and, the, and I'm thinking like, now I'm in a, now I feel like I'm in, a, I'm a boxer hearing about old Muhammad Ali fights. So I'm like, Ooh, and I'm just super intrigued. Like we're going to talk a whole lot more, but I don't even want to, now we only got to talk about your history of the market. So I just made a new friend. I'm going to rape his brain or download his brain. Better way to say it. I'm a downloader's brain. <laughs> way better way to say it, right? I'm a downloader's brain over the course of time, just just because he's experienced this whole industry changing. Right. So anyway, That's does amazing, anybody have man. any questions? Because Tito and I end up spending the whole time just talking shop. We do this anyway about once a week. So um, y'all kind of now in our little private Zoom as we talk shop. So let it, let it let it not be about us. Please let it be about you. Mr. Vila, please take the helm before I, I got like 15 more stories. <laughs> <laughs> we love it though, man. We love it. We, uh, you know, it's all, uh, it, it's, it's a whole world that most people don't even know exists. So I think it's, um, you know, one, it's, it's almost like, uh, uh, one of those best kept secrets to, to, to be able to kind of, you know, understand that, you know, all, all of the superficial aspects of this market that make it seem boring to people, which in my opinion is partially by design. Um, it's it's slowly you know flourishing and technologically speaking we the people are kind of taking you know matters into our own hands and uh finding unique ways to help people understand how interesting it really is and, and how much opportunity there is as well so i feel like that's a big part of what we're doing here so so i love it man listen love nobody nobody asked a question okay so i did my first zoom i did my first zoom live right and i was because i, I was trying to get something else recorded i couldn't get the recording so i went live i was working with my friend Dwayne. So I'm showing Dwayne kind of what Forex trading is. It's, 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 he's a smart guy. He's in operating rooms, uh, passing the, the people, the, 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 the uh, tools and stuff. It's a smart guy, right? So we're talking and I'm, I'm showing him, this is a trade, right? <laughs> and he said, when he got done, he said, okay, but can I trade Lysol? Can I, can I buy uh, Dove? I said, maybe if you buy the US 30, I don't know, but no, we trading currencies. And he just, just having his <laughs> eyes wake up from, what is great marketing from the U.S. being stocks is buying companies. And that's the best way to go. Right. And getting that we're taking the dollar, putting them in a dog fight with the yen and betting. We're dog fighting right now without getting in trouble. So um, mm -hmm. just to, and then watching his eyes wake up like, oh, I said, that's what I've been trying to say to you. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Oh, we got a hand up. Gregory, oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Mr. Wings. Mr. Wings. Good, good morning. 
How you doing, sir? Morning. Oh, just just fine. And 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 I'm I'm relatively well. I'm brand new at this particular part. Um, um, uh, my wife's been getting me really involved in one of the first things I was asking her. I see the graph, and I'm familiar with graphs, but I see words in the background against the uh, against the screen. And I was trying to uh, uh, do they describe what the graph is about? Because some of them are blocked by the actual uh, figures or the yeah. You're talking about yeah. You're talking about this watermark back here. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's basically just telling you what chart you're looking at. Right. So in the case of the, uh, the Forex markets, um, you know, every time you look at a different one, so let's say, for example, I switch out here to, uh, uh, you know, GBP NZD, which is the British pound of the New Zealand dollar that changes out here in the background. This is just a, a cool little option you have in trading view, um, that, you know, helps, uh, for yourself or for others on, on, let's say you're on a Zoom or whatever, it's easy to know exactly what you're looking at without having to look all over the screen. So it's right here in the background to tell you which currency pairs you're, uh, you're, you're watching on the chart. Oh, perfect. All right. So that's user friendly. Okay, great. Yeah. You just Make go into here. I don't know if you use TradingView, but I highly recommend it. You go into your settings. You can right click on the screen right here mm -hmm. and you, you go down to settings here at the bottom mm -hmm. and then you go to appearance. And right here, you see watermark. Oh, okay. That's that's how you make that happen. You can change the uh, the color and the opacity and all that. Like okay. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you, Alex. Like just a novice question, but thank you very much. Not not thank a problem. You. It's a good one. Hold it's on one second. Give me the give me the screen, Tito. Yep. That question brought things to mind for me, uh, <laughs> Mr. Wings. Let me show you something. One second. Invest in the I keep doing it like this. I feel like, hold on one second. I'm not, I can show you what we're doing. Once, let me go to share my screen. Screen number three, go to number two. Uh, I'm not, it's not, I want to go to www.investing.com. Let's see that's there we go. Okay, so so um so Greg, the question that you asked made me think of this. So I'm gonna show it to you. So this is one of the places, especially before uh, Epic, I will go to to just get information, right? Mm -hmm. So the 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 art of what we're doing back to it being um currency trading is we're taking the eight largest central banks back to the dogfight scenario, and so okay. I used to look at this because I, I, I absolutely was going to stay away from this currency, which goes to a central bank. So let me go mm -hmm. on these dates, right? So I have these dates written down on my calendar. You can see I got calendars, about, calendars behind me because I one day I took a trade during the current during the interest rate and it just destroyed my whole concept mm. of me being a winner for about 37 seconds. So, <laughs> so, so here we go. We in the United States, we spend the U.S. dollars, just what we know. But that's only in the United States. We happen to have the also the reserve currency for the world, but that's a different conversation. But it's still the dollar, right? Yes. If you go to Europe, which I was talking about earlier, the Eurozone, they have so our central bank is called the Fed, which is okay. a little tricky because you think federal government, but it's not. It's a whole if I get started, Ram is gonna jump in and start talking about cryptocurrency and fiat, it's gonna go crazy. <laughs> so all of our money is is from the central bank in the U.S. is called the Fed. In mm -hmm. the Eurozone, which is another part of the world, they have the uh, the, the um, Euro European Central Bank. Mm -hmm. Inside of um, Britain, they have the um, Brit uh, the Bank of England. In okay. uh, Switzerland, they have the Swiss Na uh, National Bank. This is the mm -hmm. Republic Bank of Australia. This is the Bank of uh, Canada. This is the Re mm -hmm. Republic Bank of New Zealand. And the mm -hmm. last one of the eight major currencies is the Bank of Japan. So. Okay. What these central banks do is they have a three-letter identification for their currency. Of um, Yolanda, can you let her in for me, please? Yolanda, I made you the co-host. Somebody trying to get in. Help me out, please. Just hit add and thank you. So these eight major currencies, or the dogs, if you will, for the dog fighting, they have their respective currencies. So ours is the USD. So mm -hmm. the Bank of England, which is the BOE, instead of being BOE, the chart is J, I mean GBP. So it's, mm. it's said to be confusing on purpose. So it's a barrier of entry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all of these eight banks, eight, eight central banks, because the mm -hmm. banks we go to, Bank of America, 
uh, um, Wells Fargo mm -hmm. in the banking world, they're called intermediate banks. They're the ones that deal with the actual customer, but they're not responsible for the movement of currency. They actually got to check in to what's called the discount desk at the end of the day and, and mm -hmm. tell it numbers. They got to do a balancing thing every day. Another long conversation, right? Yeah, got it. These, mm -hmm. these eight central banks all have a unique currency to have a three letter identification. Mm -hmm. And then you get a chance to mix and match them like a dog fight. So the U S mm. at any given time, the USD may be winning against the Euro, but at the same exact time, it could be losing to the yen. Gotcha. So when you go to the chart and I'm gonna give it back to Mr. Uh, Avila, when you go back to the chart that he was on, hold on, let me stop my share. When you go back to the chart that he's on, he's letting you know which pair, which is which dog fight he's actually looking at at the time. And so if you look up at his top left, it also says G, uh, GBP, NZD at the top or the top mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. It also says it there. Then under it actually tells you it's the pound and New Zealand dollar. So go up, mm -hmm. go up there, there. So first you got it at the top because that's how you change it. Then mm -hmm. under it, you have it what it is. And then what we do is we put a watermark in the middle just so while we're trading and working, we don't got to mm. glance our eyes up. It's right there in our chest. Gotcha. Mm. So he put truth. right now he's putting a pound versus the New Zealand dollar. Mm -hmm. Fight. <laughs> okay. So okay. So the two, the two, the the two under the the big capital letters. Those that's those are the two that are actually fighting. And that overall fella is that the referee, the big numbers. Those two, those two uh, British pounds slash U.S dollar that's where the battle is right now that's yeah but all of it means the same thing so it's like if i said greg or i said mr wings i'm talking about the same person so okay you see british pound new zealand dollar that's mm -hmm. the same exact thing as g uh, bp nzd gotcha gotcha okay excellent thank you sir thank yes you. sir mr avila i turn the call back over to you roger that yeah that was good 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 uh diving deep you know, I think this is all really uh, helpful, really useful information, especially for people coming in and getting started, uh, which is really our strength here is we're, uh, we're bringing people into a whole new world. Uh, we got somebody with their hand up, um, virtual customer services. Go ahead, sir. Hey, what's up, man? This is Carlton. How are you doing, Carlton? Good morning. Good, good. So uh, I heard you guys earlier. Um, talking about the uh, cryptocurrencies. And um, so I got a uh, question in regards to that. Uh, so, you know, obviously during this holiday weekend, um, most of the market is, is down um, until uh, tomorrow uh, night at five. However, BTC USD, uh, I'm assuming that's probably just 24 hours. Um, but the question that I have is, does it operate um, in regards to trade-wise, similar to uh, the, the index, the, uh, the U.S. 30. And I asked that because, you know, I, I decided to do a quick little sample yesterday morning. Probably shouldn't have. But in any case, <laughs> I did at a 0 0.01. And the way it was moving and calculating, I was like, it reminded me of the U.S. 30. But I, I just wanted to ask some questions about that in regards to how the trades are calculated with uh, the BTC USD. Hopefully that was clear. That's clear. I got it. Uh, so when you say how the trades are calculated, you mean as far as like how the the, the price movement is calculated or as far as? The yeah, because you, you like, like it, it seemed like it, it works very similar, like I said, to us 30 i mean it definitely is not like uh, a regular uh, currency pair like eur usd that's for sure so i'm just trying to get some clarification for those of you that you know obviously trade the cryptocurrency Let me go first, a lot more than yeah I go ahead Mr. so the the first the first pause i want to do carlton is you ask the question and in your question you said i know it's like this for sure so i want to go before you're sure right because if you're short and we don't have a question, you want me to confirm something for you. So I want, and I'm helping you because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm really listening, right? Um, my experience looking at the the, uh, the BTC USD, it actually does work like a currency pair, else not like the US 30, right? The US 30, it moves crazy. So it moves crazy like the US 30. You could 
be up or down something serious in a second. So it it, it has the the uh, the wingspan of the US 30, but the US 30 is just those those actual 30 pairs, those 30 stocks moving in the opinion of those stocks. And then it has the manipulation of the stock market. The, the, the BTC USD from the trading perspective is like a hyper uh, pound yen. Because of, so one of my experiences with the pound yen, so I, I just wanted to go because what I'm saying now is contradicting what you told me, you know, right? Um, so to answer the, the question part of it, not the, the, the part you already said you knew, is when I started trading, I was trading the, the, the Euro dollar, right? They said it was the most liquid pair. I figured it was the biggest crack game because that's how my brain works. I'm from North Philadelphia. And I was telling somebody the other day that if you had three people at the crack game and you betting, they count on every dollar you win or lose, right? Because you you winning. If you, you got 50 people there, they can't see the same way. Now you, can, you We had something that we call stuffing. So I would win. I would put some money in my pocket. So everything you're looking at, and then I win again, I put some more money in my pocket. So when I lose this money in my hand, I leave and nobody's mad, right? So to me, that was the that was the Euro dollar. And then so what I noticed in the Euro dollar, back to the observation from, from experience, is that it moved about 40 pips a day. Then I found out you can actually track it because there's an indicator called the ATR, right? It's, it's the um, average true range. And if you put it on a daily, put it on the candle, it'll tell you how far that candle went that day, right? Cool. So now I got this experience with the U with the Euro dollar. Then I jumped over and I stopped wanting to be a pair. Somebody I'm studying, looking up stuff. You got to find out who to listen to and guess if you if they smart or not or the whole thing. The guy he tried to check my chin. He said some of you guys are only pair traders, not currency traders. You need to understand the actual underlying currencies. So then when you go to the pairs, you have a better respect for them. So I grew from a pair trader because he challenged my manhood to a currency trader and I jumped on the pound yen. Woo-wee. So I could normally go down 20 pips on a Euro dollar, catch the trades going back the other way. I was jump, I had, I had a method of operation with the Euro dollar, right? I had a 50 pip stop loss. So I would just jump and do all my trades. I tried to put that 50 pip stop loss on the pound uh, a yen like I did on the Euro dollar different monster so i'm going i'm going the wrong way one day uh, and i'm like back to your question i'm going the wrong way one day and i'm like okay that's cool it was going 60 pips against me because i moved my stop loss down because i'm like no it's good, good it went 100 pips against me i said this is a different monster <laughs> so to your point the the um btc usd is moving strong like the JPY, um, the, the pound yen, as strong as you see movements on the US 30, but if you're watching, the US 30 isn't going against something else. It's just going against itself, whether it's going to strength or weakness. So if you're looking at a, a, a currency pair, that's why it's two of them, while one is going to strength, it's to the relativeness of the weakness of the other one. I hope that makes sense. So when I, when I first started looking at the, 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 the dollar yen, which is the UJ, right? Uh, Coach, Coach, Coach Max's favorite pair, I didn't trade it because most of the time it's going in the same direction. That's why I look like it's on the chart, the two pairs, the two currencies. That's why I look like it's consolidating a lot. So I really didn't mess with it. Then when she showed me that she really just hunt for one move a day per session, I said, oh, so now she has less volatility than what you're going to get on US 30, but she got a consistent move. She's hunting. That's why she, from my perspective, as a currency trader, because because I, I took that challenge like he like he called my mama something. So I know I know the different pairs now. So he helped me by challenging me. So if you look at the US 30, it doesn't have anything to go against. It's nothing comparatively moving it's itself. So it's totally different in my opinion from the US 30. I would compare it more to the JPY, I mean the the, the pound yen. So please give me some feedback too. So I tell me I know. That we got. Um, yeah, no, nah, that that was that was uh extremely helpful. Um, yeah, that was extremely helpful, uh, especially um, uh, uh, looking at you know the pairs and 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 how it, how it moves. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate the feedback on that. Awesome. Um, that that definitely uh helps. 
So now with that, look at the, the DXY index, the one that Coach Ryan talks about a lot. And you'll now from a bigger trading perspective, you see he look at the DXY. So he extracts the, the dollar. Watch what that's doing. Then he goes back into the market as a currency trader and look at how the dollar that's going up. How is it affecting these other, how the actual seven pairs that it actually goes against? So you'll see him go, okay, let's look at uh, uh, the U.S. dollar slash, I mean, the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. He already looked at the DXY to see that it was going up. So if the, the if the DXY is going up, ideally, the, the, the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar should be going down because the dollar's going was called to strength. But now, now it still has to interact with what the actual Australian dollar is doing. And that's how we get these pairs because it's actually the two fighting, why, why, which is why I told you, or not you, but which is why I said earlier, it's like the dog fight or, or, or watching the crap game when you get to the actual chart. So I'm actually still watching the US 30 because I know it doesn't have anything to go against. There's, there's no second data point that's interacting. So I actually stay away from it still today. I see the movement, the movement is heavy and I haven't traded Bitcoin either. But since Rambus is on it so heavy, I've been watching it like I'm about to do a robbery. So, so again, North Philadelphia, some of my people weren't, weren't productive. I'm casing it, okay? So if you wanted to rob somebody, which I, I just, just, like a movie, right? You would sit and watch the pattern of the person. What time do they go to work? What time do they walk, walk their dog? Which way do they go? Do they go the same way every day? So you can't only watch one time. You got to get a pattern of the person till you know that pattern is good as them. Then you interact your game plan in their pattern. That's how you rob somebody. Not that I know. So inside of that, right, <laughs> inside of that, that's what we're doing here. We're looking to rob the Forex market of its liquidity and bringing it to our bank account. So I can't rob the US 30 the same way. I mean, I can catch a, I see it turning and I'm good at that part and other stuff we're doing. But right now I'm taking, so this is this is part of Rambus and our conversation pretty much once a week. He gives me more fundamental uh, information and I give him what I see technically, and then he takes the trades and it tells me how good he's doing, and I and I and, and I cheer for him. So I'm still casing the joints out myself, but that's how that's how you do it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm casing the joint as well, man. <laughs> get in and get out. We got a, we got 113 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> it's like heat out here for me. <laughs> oh, Tito, I'll turn it over to you, and then we got after you after you give your insight, we got another hand up. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think that pretty much sums it up. It's, it's you know, um, it's like you said, currency pairs. It's just you got two, right? Uh, one against the other. In indices, they are. I mean, they, they are their self-contained assets. So they have their own algorithm of the their own things that are being uh, kind of uh, compared to each other. And so you'll see varied volatilities depending on what the index is. U.S. thirty happens to be highly volatile because the, the the components in the algorithm, the assets within it that are uh, being compared to each other are, are highly volatile uh, on their own. The same way, just like Mr. Allen was talking about the pound yen, uh, both highly volatile cur currencies on their own, when you combine them, it's fireworks. You know, so um, uh, BTC, uh, as, as, a, uh, as the leader of the pack in the crypto world, uh, and highly, there's a lot of speculation on it, meaning there's a lot of interest in it and a lot of people that are um you know investing in uh or uh let's say uh setting up for uh an entry by selling so there's a lot of movement a lot of volume happening there so it's uh, understandable that you're going to see that uh and a lot of there's also a lot of fundamentals affecting the world of uh, crypto as well so um yeah i think i think mr allen summed it up well though so i think uh we'll leave that one at that uh, Mr. Wings uh, has his hand up. Do you have another question, sir? Yeah, yes, I do. Uh, listen, guys, now I am, um, uh, first and foremost, I've been very inspired uh, by talking to Mr. Allen and Mr. Rambus did an interview for me. And of course, my wife, uh, Nona, has been doing this. And so now it is added 
something else to my uh, slate. But I'm bouncing back and forth between uh, Florida, have some business ventures going, and Chicago, um, where my family is. And now the time zones sometimes throw me. Is there a basic way to attack this uh, uh, this trading and this comparison, comparing uh, uh, through the time zones? Something I should know in terms of how things are you know, what's happening, because everything is, so much of this is, uh, these are in different time zones, and I get a little thrown off just trying to keep up with the fact that my wife is about an hour behind me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, time zones are, I would say, one of the most crucial factors in the Forex market, because uh, the banking hours uh, of that particular um, currency, you know, let's say you're talking about Euro, then in general, you're talking about uh, you know, Europe, if you're talking about, you know, the U.S. dollar, then you're talking about North America, right? The business hours, more or less, of uh, specifically New York, the East Coast. Um, you know, understanding what those hours are, like when those markets open and close, is important because you're always going to want to trade, ideally, within the session, within those hours, the business hours, the banking hours of uh, that currency. So if you're, if you're, watching a certain currency pair, um, I encourage everybody to pay attention to the way price moves uh, as well as volume uh, within the hours of one of the two that are in the pair. So in, in this case, like right now we have on the screen, GBP, NZD, right? So we have- Put up, put up, put up the dollar. volume indicator. So, so while you're talking, you mentioned a new yeah. word. Um, there we go. <clears throat> Uh, so in, in this particular case, you can see we have two polar opposite time zones. OK, so you're not going to see too much of a difference because when when London is asleep, uh, you know, New Zealand is doing something else. Right. So uh, New Zealand, uh, uh, British pound and New Zealand dollar, it does tend to be, um, let's say, more consistent in its movement and its volume because of that. But even then, you can still see there are certain patterns at certain times of day uh, where, you know, volume goes way down. So uh, in this particular case, you can see here at the bottom of the screen, I'm looking at the date and the time. This, mm -hmm. this, this, this particular hour here of, uh, of 5 p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. there is almost no volume at all compared to the rest of it. Right. right? Um, so, you know, this is, that, that's, that's relatively common. I mean, market, market close happens uh, in New York around 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then you get, you know, a, a whole lot of uh, uh, fees and, and high spreads. And high, a spread is basically just what a broker, that's how brokers make their money. It's just mm -hmm. they, they, the, the price between the sell and the buy uh, gets spread so that, uh, you know, it's uh, in that time, if you make a trade, it's more difficult for you to hit your target. And, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the difference between those prices will go to them. But in general, I'm going to go to a different uh, pair here real quick. Um, let me take a look. Like, uh, okay, let's look at, you know, more popular one. Um, so Euro US dollar. <clears throat> so if you look here, okay, so once again, here around the 5 p.m. hour, you can see how volume gets really low, mm -hmm. right? Um, if I look at, I want I want to take it to uh, to the uh, the morning hours here. Okay, so coming into so coming into New York, right? Which the New York session begins around seven a.m., eight a.m., right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna notice here, right at right at between six a.m. and seven a.m. You see, this is the volume meter. This is showing you how many trades are coming in. Mm, okay. Notice how it just starts to climb up, right? So mm. right here from 6 to 7 a.m., it starts to kind of scale up. Mm -hmm. So these, these are hours where the volume starts to go up significantly, right. okay? Mm -hmm. Now here, once again, so now I, after a certain hour, usually around 11 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the highest volume in the market, which is the overlap between the London session and the New York session, Mm -hmm. which happens in the morning hours of the East Coast, right? Um, after around 11 a.m., you'll notice the volume kind of starts to die down. And then throughout mm -hmm. the day, it's kind of slow. You'll still see 
significant price movements sometimes because that's always dependent upon uh, you know what's going on uh, in the world and what's going mm-hmm. on in the markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and you'll also get a fair amount of market manipulation mm-hmm. uh, in, in the low volume hours. Um, but you'll, you'll see here once again, just as an example, you go through the night, this is all going through the night, lower volume. Mm-hmm. And once you mm-hmm. step into the 2 a.m. territory, mm-hmm. which is what we call the opening of the Frankfurt session in Germany, mm-hmm. now the volume starts to spike, mm-hmm. right? And then mm-hmm. you start to see big moves. Like if you see these yeah. candles here, yeah, right? So you, you see that influx coincide with the volume, mm-hmm. okay? So um, why do we like to trade within the hours of the given currency pair, in this case with uh, Euro US dollar around between 2 a.m., let's say, and 11 a.m., because of, mm-hmm. that's when they overlap, London and New York. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the main reason is because you have enough money coming into the market, you have enough volume, you have enough retail traders like us mm-hmm. coming into the market that uh, whatever, whatever moves that that pair needs to do based on the conditions, the condition, the technical conditions and the fundamental conditions of the world at large, the social uh, and political conditions, uh, it will uh, have a much higher likelihood of making the moves in that direction, mm-hmm. right? And the, uh, let's say any manipulation that can take place from the institutions that are also trading in the markets will be offset by the higher volume. So in other words, it's, um, it's uh, let's say, uh, in my opinion, a, a slightly more reliable market. And you'll, you'll always hear Coach Max say, never trade a currency pair outside of its session. Mm-hmm. Always trade inside of the session. Mm-hmm. And in my experience, and, I, and, and I've, I've tried it all, uh, it's because there is a much higher chance of the market doing something uh, different from what you're reading uh, outside of its session. Mr. Allen, mm-hmm. do you have some input on that? Yeah, first, um, right there where you are at eight o'clock and go back to uh, 3 a.m. On that, on, that, uh, on that volume. Right, 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 that, that right there, you can see mm-hmm. how high volume is, right? It's more mm-hmm. like the crap game, right? So again, mm-hmm. for me, I'm going to start in North Philadelphia, but I'm going to take us out of North Philadelphia because everybody might not be able to relate to those stories, right? So for me, I would be at the crap game at Brother Sam house and it, Brother Sam let anybody shoot whatever they want. You can just keep getting on the dice. So mm-hmm. because I was, a, I was first, I'm 14, my money not long, I can't really jump on the dice and make any real impact, right? So I'm not even shooting. I'm watching and I'm side betting. So when I started looking at this currency stuff, it took me directly to uh, Brother Sam House, 7th in York, shooting dice on the uh, pool table, mm-hmm. okay? So you're never touching the dice. So now let's go to Vegas for y'all. So if you can't relate to the fully. So now you're walking through the casino, Somebody else is shooting. Somebody else is the uh, the house. All you're mm. doing is watching. Right. So this guy got a hot hand or he sucks. You got to choose how you're going to bet based on what you're seeing. On a, and you still don't know what the next role going to be. You can only take your past experiences with this shooter and yeah. then predict what's going to happen next, whether you're going to like the dice or not like the dice. I'll go to Vegas and bet against the shooter and nobody on the table, table likes me, but so what, I'm going to odds, right? So mm-hmm. that thing. So, because no other one of the people that helped trade, so this whole this whole process. So now you're side betting, and you want to be there when the most people are at the game, like I was saying earlier with Carlton, right? So yeah. that way, if the move goes where you see, you can bet as many people, and nobody nobody bothers you, right? That's mm-hmm. one. Two, we are side betting, and the actual shooter is the banker of that day. Meaning, uh, give me back the screen. So, Greg, you and I, we're, we're side betting. Mm-hmm. And now we're looking and we're saying, can you see the, uh, the uh, currencies again? No, sir. What do you see? Uh, cartoon. Oh, now I see the currencies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, right. Okay. So, well, let me make sure they're not about to talk. Okay. So, at, at it's really 3 a.m. 3 a.m. East Coast time, me and you, right? Mm-hmm. 3 a.m. 
a half an hour before, so 2.30 in the morning, our time, these bankers and employees, not not like, like the, the people that work at the bank, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's actually 7.30 Europe time. So they're getting their coffee. They're getting ready to go shoot the dice. Mm-hmm. They're getting orders for the day. You're going to start buying this much of this, this much of that. So they're not even guessing. So there's two, I'm sorry, it's two departments. One department is filling the util- the utilitarian which means if Microsoft needed something to happen, they would go to a bank to do the transaction. That's a utilitarian purpose. They're not trying to influence Forex. They're just doing their business. That's right. shooting the dice. Mm-hmm. They have another section, just so I can be clear in our communication, that's actually betting too, but not them. So the people that got to just do their job. That's it. So at, at 3 a.m., what's about to happen is the whole London is coming to the crap tank. Mm. You can't like you can't tell them to come at five. You can't tell them to come in. They're coming at three a.m. Monday through us uh, Monday through Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Three a.m. coming in Sunday through Thursday, rather. They're coming in to go shoot the dice based on what their instructions are. Mm-hmm. So those two hours are huge. Mm-hmm. Now as now and again, then at eight a.m. So seven thirty our time. The U.S. shoot dice shooters are getting their orders for the day. Mm-hmm. So at eight o'clock. They coming to shoot the dice. Mm-hmm. So as a side better, you want to be there when the shooters are there. Yes, right. Yeah. So that's that. Now, from an epic perspective, because you didn't have to know all of that, how I just gave it, or the way I gave it, or what Tito did, because Tito brought a high level um, understanding of the whole, the whole industry, including volume. The way Epic has done it, and this is the genius of what we have, and most people, like when it's great, you don't see the special effects. Does that make sense? Mm, true, because I'm 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 so I'm absorbed in what I see. Right. So, but I'm saying, any, like, so what Epic has done is they've taken all this information we're talking about, and they mm-hmm. said we have three trading sessions. Come to the trading session at these times, mm. and follow the coaches and take trades with us and learn what is in the live market. Well, they mm-hmm. already, because I was a trader before I got here, I'm watching the times they picking. They're picking the openings of these certain banking hours. So this they mm-hmm. open. The Japan session, mm-hmm. which is going to include Australia, then the um, the uh, English session, mm-hmm. what, uh, London they call it, which is going to include, include the pound, and then the U.S. session, which is going to include Canada. Mm-hmm. So they didn't explain why. They didn't mm-hmm. get super technical. They said, right. you're paying $100. We got your best interest. Come to these sessions. So the right. times I think you're talking about is mm-hmm. known as locking in with the coaches, like the, the, I mean, she pick her, the session, she's going to be the most productive and she got whatever that thing is. And that's why it looks funny to a non, you're not a nine to five person. So please don't let, but so somebody's not already trading, it right. looks like we're doing something wacky, but we're actually working inside of the rhythm of our industry. Well, it, it, it makes so much sense to me because I was a crap shooter, a hard crap shooter. Okay, you give me this. You feel my pain in. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, gentlemen. Awesome. All right. Good one. Okay, so uh, let's see. Any more we're questions? At, we're at 41. Let, let, let one more come through, whatever's yeah, going to be. Yeah, we got time Pass for the one more. And then, yeah, let's wrap up. Last person, anybody, anybody. Go on once. Go on twice. Absolutely. Mr. Rambus. Well, as always, phenomenal job, gentlemen. Uh, appreciate all that you guys do to bring added value to our movement. Of course, we are on our weekend blitz this weekend. We actually do three opportunity overviews today. That would be at noon Eastern, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm sorry noon 5 p.m and 9 p.m three times today you have an opportunity to invite guests to our movement if you're on the residual income side and trying to build that part of the business right and that happens at noon five and nine the opportunity zoom link is 777-434-6287 that's on zoom at 12 5 and 9 again the id number is 777-434 six two eight seven 
We also have at 1 p.m. today, our success lab. That is at uh, opportunity.epictrading.com. You will also have a 9 p.m. opportunity Zoom for the corporate office as well. So we keep ours just as a backup in case there's been some technical issues with the corporate opportunity Zoom at 9 p.m., but they'll be doing that as well. So two corporate opportunities today. Success Lab is at 1 p.m. Eastern. And then they do an opportunity overview at 9 p.m. until the first of the year. Uh, and that, is, of course, is uh, at opportunity.epictrading.com. And then tomorrow night at 8 p.m., don't forget, we have our Builders Academy where we help you guys build the residual income side, the B quadrant side of our house. And we appreciate, again, every one of you uh, to help this movement progress forward. And uh, if that's your side of the house, be on tomorrow. Uh, of course, promote that to your team members so they can get the information on how to build the residual income, how to connect with people, how to uh, move people from not knowing to knowing about Epic. Uh, and we, of course, support that every single Sunday, 8 p.m. And we celebrate you. We're going to talk about some new ranks uh and more people who've actually hit new levels of residual income let me say congratulations uh to my brother to tito avila who just hit the founder 1000 rank added an extra thousand dollars to his to his in, uh trading income so congratulations again sir and many other people who will be recognized tomorrow night at eight o'clock congrats in advance take care we'll see you guys later i'll turn it back over to you Thank you very much, Mr. Rambus. Um, before we wrap up here, thank you, thank you. Uh, we have uh, one more question here from Nikki. He was asking, how do we uh, uh, select volume? Uh, when you're in TradingView, uh, anytime you want to um, apply an indicator right to your chart, you're gonna go up here to this little FX, right? And when you, when you mouse over it, you're gonna see it says indicators and strategies. You click on that and you just search for whatever it is that you want to search for. So in the case of volume, you type in volume. Okay. And the one that's very simply marked volume without anything else, any other bells and whistles, that's the one that I have here. That's like the default one uh, trading view gives you is good. So um, you can, you can find a, a whole lot of indicators in here, obviously, but that's how you get that one. So uh, with that said, Thank you so um, much. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you all so much for your kind congratulations. Uh, this is, uh, we're just getting warmed up on this journey together. I'm very excited for what is to come, especially in this new year. Uh, well, check this so, out, Tito. Let me, before you close, can I get that? Yeah, just, go ahead, sir. The genius of the B quadrant side, right? Just from a Tito perspective, because I'm just, you just, it just happened. If you're trading and you're trading a dollar a pip, we work on getting 20 pips you have now a dollar that you that you wager times 20 pips is the movement you've made twenty dollars if you wanted to give yourself a raise you can take a hundred percent raise by just wagering two dollars simple math right the thing is it gets scary to some people when the numbers get bigger but the math doesn't change right so what i just seen my friend tito do is i've seen him without whatever else i know he got going on in his life he went from five hundred dollars a month which is 125 a week to a thousand dollars a month, which is $250 a week. So on one side of his portfolio, he doubled his income, but what it gets him to do, and I'm not suggesting that he does it, but I hope he listens to me carefully that he gets to also now to take that doublement in his B quadrant money residual side and actually apply some or all of it to what he was already doing on his I quadrant side. So as we're talking to y'all about how to trade and getting 20 pips out the market, you may work at McDonald's. I don't know. The hundred dollars is kicking your butt, right? Right. So, but you're learning how to get 20 pips out the market because you're here with us. That's kind of the game plan. So you can only bet 10 cent per pip, right? But you got the skill set because that's what we're working on every week. You can actually go and whether get another job, get a better, get a raise at McDonald's or build the residual side of what we do and then take that money and put it back into this money. And you can actually give yourself a raise every day if you want to by compounding your trade from 10 cent a pip to 20 cent a pip. And when, but once you have the skill set of getting 20 pips, the rest of it is just math. That's right. <clears throat> $27 a pip, 
times 20 pips is $540 a day. <laughs> you take $540 a day times it four days a week, it's $2,000 and $80 a week. You times that by a month is a, is a little over 8,400, which takes you into $100,000 a year. But here's the thing. You mess around and go higher than $27 a pip and all the other math changes. So $270 a pip, which I'm not saying anybody should trade. However, we know the numbers is a million dollars a year with the mm -hmm. same 20 pips. So my brother just got a raise in one quadrant and can now apply it if he chooses to. I'm not recommending he does, but the skill set is already the same. All that talk he just talking about, knowing the different volumes and all that, that person has a bigger bank balance residually to throw at the market. Good, 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> That's so absolutely that right. And wh and whether you're taking that and 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 uh, uh, let's say reinvesting it into the markets through your own trading or through something like the uh, the automated trading bot that we're working on, uh, to me it makes perfect sense because. This is, this is a skill set that, that I am learning to love, right? Getting in the game, playing the game, um, and, uh, and, and making it work for me, showing other people how to make it work for them. Uh, you know, it, it just makes, it, it makes sense to me, right? In my personal opinion to do that. So, uh, so yes, it, it, it does. Uh, it's, it's very rewarding to be at the next level. At the same time, it's, uh, again, I feel like we're all just getting warmed up here, so. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the things to come, uh, and we'll get we'll get uh, deeper into the stuff with regard to the uh, automated trading and, and all that, uh, uh, you know, soon, soon enough. So, with that said, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Allen, Mr. Rambis, and everybody for your questions. Um, yes, it's an absolute honor to uh, to to be on here with you. This is a great team, and uh, if we didn't get to your question or you didn't. Um, uh, get a chance to ask it, please uh, bring it to the GEP group. And if you're not in the GEP group, uh, make sure you get with uh, your sponsor to uh, point you in the right direction for that. And with that said, uh, everybody continue to have very happy holidays and uh, we will see you next week. Take care. God bless.